Fisher. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to The Hang on Tuesday night. I believe we're on episode 64, so welcome to the Tuesday Night Hang. Tonight's interesting because it's not just a music hang. Music actually runs through it. It's the reason why, actually, one of the reasons why um, me and our friends got together. But my other passion is fishing and boating. And so our bosses intertwine both these things with music and boating and fishing. So um, that being said, tonight we're going to have Vinny and Sour La Sorsa on. They're going to be our guests from... Uh, from multitude of wonderful entities that they have, Freedom Fighters Outdoors, the Freedom Fighters Outreach Program, and also the uh, Last Mango Boat Works. So we're going to bring Vinny and Sarah in here in a few minutes. But before we do that, I cannot, we cannot leave out the co-host with the most, Mr. Badfinger himself. What's up, Stephen Wright? Where you at, Badfinger? Right here. He's, <laughs> let me, hey, that's a nice finger you got. Hey, what you, how you doing? I, it's very good. What would you slap somebody with that finger? You know, it's 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 been it, it's been one of those times where that could have possibly happened, but nope, nope. That was a uh, that was a thirty six pound rubber mallet. <laughs> good job. Yeah, good. you know. So, but so I guess you're not uh, doing it's healing. So you're not doing sign language tonight, is what you're saying? I, I am. It just means something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to put you in a bubble, man. Gotta I'm telling you, you the, last, the last month between COVID and, and broken fingers and doctor's appointments, it's been, uh, it's been a challenge. <laughs> I understand. But we're here, and it's Tuesday night. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to tonight because – I need some like positivity. I've been kind of disappointed with humanity lately. <laughs> so, so uh, just lately. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you know, it's it's gonna be good to have something uh, positive going on. So I'm looking forward to having having Vinny and Sarah on. So absolutely, yeah, we we were on earlier, just kind of catching up, and there's already laughs to be had. So they mm -hmm. will be on, and we'll have a we'll get informed and laugh a little bit. So it'll be fun. Yep. Anyway, and they got two well, organizations, to, so it's 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 even it even makes up for even more that we lack, you know. Exactly. <laughs> they, we're slackers compared to those. Exactly. Uh, to, compared to them, but uh, no, yep. I'm excited yep. about tonight as always, as always. And yeah. um, so it's been two weeks. Uh, a lot has happened. You've smashed your finger, um, so <laughs> you know all about that. I mean, we we've been good with um, the Billy Band. We've been we just did the garden last week, and another like eight, eight, oh, what, nine or ten days we're back. So that's great. So yep. we're starting to pick up work again, and that's been wonderful. And let's see what else? Uh, what else? The recording thing. Uh, how do you how are you coming with the tune core stuff? By the way. Good, good. So um, yeah, so you guys know that we've been. Um, we had a little hiccup, but um, a little we've hiccup. <laughs> we've been uh, joking over here. Yeah, you know, but uh, but we've been working on. Uh, you guys have seen the wonderful world video from Ted Eye uh, already. Um, if you're a hang regular, if not, it's out there on Carl's YouTube page, and it's what was playing at the beginning uh, during the intro. But uh, we've actually got an extended play version um of the track and we're going through the digital distribution right now so uh very very soon we'll have that up and available on um on apple music amazon music um google play store you know i think there's like 40 different things that it'll it'll go live yeah. on so yeah things i can't pronounce exactly yep. and that extended play version nobody nobody has heard that one yet so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm excited about that. And also, we're also working on a couple other tracks coming up. We've got the Maynard Ferguson medley coming on the Ted Eye stuff, too. So that's in the works. So mm -hmm. we're working away. We're, we're just having a hard time getting it all out at the right time because both Stephen and I know there's never a right time. It's only the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
it's it's uh there's always something going on <laughs> yeah that's all good but, uh, it's all good yep yeah, that's good cool but um all right yeah the only thing i'll say is um we've uh we've already got a good chat going on um cool so like we always say at the beginning you know uh we will have time for for q a uh throughout the night so i'm here hanging out with you guys in the chat um i'll feed questions over as as much as we possibly can um you know uh so if you guys do have questions and comments throw them in the facebook comments throw them in the youtube comments uh, it all comes into one central screen, and I'll uh, I'll feed them out. So um, I'll I'll be watching out for those. So yeah, fish but. heads, your job is to come up with questions for uh, for me and our extinguished extinguished. That means that they're like fire extinguished. Extinguished. They're, not, they're no longer here. <laughs> they're gone. They have been. They vanished. <laughs> they're gone. It was that close. <laughs> Hey, it only took oh, us God. 15 minutes to lose our guests tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, we, we lose guests, we lose feeds. You know, the gremlins always are in, but... Oh, you thanks. had to say it. It's been going so well. <laughs> I know. I said the G word, the gremlin word. But, uh, you know, before the, before the gremlins come out, I'm going to hit hit everybody with a little uh, pre prelim of what my relationship with Mr. Vinny is. Um, if we go back, I believe it was... Oh, I got to think about this for a second. I, I want to say it was 2007 um, was when I first became friendly with Vinny. Um, so like I was saying earlier, music always runs through. I'm very fortunate and my friends are very fortunate because we, you know, we do what we love and love what we do. Um, so again, um, I'm a frustrated captain fisherman guy for years. And when I joined Billy's band, he knew I was a uh, Freeport, South Shore, Long Island guy, and I had boats. I was fishing a lot, um, was mating a lot on boats and stuff like this. So long story short, I am, before Vinny comes out, we'll just talk about the late, great Gene Pellin, and Vinny can talk about the late, great Gene Pellin. Gene Pellin was uh, Mr. Joel's captain, and uh Vinny was close with him as as of I was very close with him. We miss him every day. He was, I, I believe, instrumental in introducing us. I'll have Vinny come on and talk. Or it might have been Jimmy Buffett and Billy's friendship. We're going to hit that. But Jimmy Buffett uh, being the wonderful uh, yachtsman and angler and outdoorsman that he is, um, has Mr. Vinny Lasorsa as his captain and Vinny joined Jimmy's outfit in 2005 at the same time I joined Billy which is kind of freaky um so Vinny's been uh Jimmy's sport fish captain for, since 2005 which is pretty amazing um that's an accomplishment in itself um it's a very tedious job keeping everything up to snuff and not only that, but building boats and keeping the program running. So he can talk a lot about that. Um, but again, the music kind of ran through it because um, what's really amazing is as a musician, we're always looking for community. I, I know I, I always look for community. Um, and as a fisherman, you always look for community. Uh, you know, it's always about the locals uh, having relationships with, you know, local fishermen, getting local knowledge. Um, and Vinny is very a big proponent of that, and to the point where, you know, he thinks like a musician. He likes to put people together in communities, and his beautiful wife Sarah is the same way. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> they started wonderful programs. Uh, he got involved with the Wounded Warriors Project first in 2009, and started doing trips for uh, 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 veterans, um, wounded veterans, taking them out fishing and did that program and then started with his lovely wife in 2014 freedom Fi fighters outdoors freedom fighter ffo freedom fighters outdoors which is uh its own entity um it's a 501c char not char uh, charitable donation company that is just all 100 percent all the proceeds go to the veterans that let them fish hunt be outdoors and have a community a self community which is amazing and that's all musicians and i think people outdoorsmen really want is just a, a community in a sense and just m music brings people together and fishing brought me and vinnie together vinnie is just always giving back to the community to the veterans to people he's the most 
uh, unselfish person I know. And uh, I've been wanting to get, in, get, get him on here for a long time, and it's been a long time coming. This could be a little while, Vin. We could be here a little while, bro. So anyway, let's welcome him and his beautiful wife, Sarah, to the feed. What's going on, Chauncey? Where are you at? Carl. <laughs> What's up, Vincent? <laughs> what are you doing? How are you? Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. That was a nice intro. Thanks for coming. I practiced it for weeks. As I say, that was a, that was a good intro. Thanks, man. What's going on over there? You guys uh, keeping warm on the uh, on the East Coast there? Definitely warm. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Summer's coming quick. Yeah, I feel like it's here. What's what's the water temperature on the East Coast right now? What do you think it is? High seventy. Yeah, see, we're we're on seventy three, seventy four. Today was hot, but it's amazing how quick it's coming. You know? Yeah. You've been fishing. A little bit. I was actually supposed to fish today, but we didn't end up fishing today. Today was the day I was supposed to fish today, too. <laughs> didn't happen. No, neither. <laughs> I think I got some Bahamas stuff probably coming up soon. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll welcome you guys. And like I said, it's been a long time coming. And uh, Stephen is hanging out with the chat. So Stephen can throw in some hellos and stuff like that. But while, while the chat's percolating, uh, I'll hit a couple things. You're from Middle Village, Queens. You're originally a Long Island kid or Queens kid, your family, well, right? Yeah, my, my, that's where I was born. So, you gotta like it because, you know, you're a New Yorker. You know, <laughs> sorry, Sarah. Um, Sarah's then, a New Yorker at heart. Well, I can tell because yeah. she's right hook. <laughs> seen her right hook. <laughs> no, <man. laughs> well, actually, you guys spend a lot of time in Montauk in the summers with the boat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, three or four months, three or four months a year. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful out there. I know you guys have a dialed in too, so that's great. So you're born in Queens. Um, when did you, your family move out uh, down south to Florida? Probably ninety eight, I think. Okay, ninety eight or ninety nine. Right. I spent like yeah, I spent time in Annapolis in between there. Um, oh, okay, that's right. I remember saying that. Yeah. So, but always around. Always, water was a big deal. You know, growing up, yeah, fishing, boats, water, all that stuff. Absolutely, it's in your blood, your family's yeah. blood too. Well, awesome. So, you know, I've seen a lot of interviews, I've read a lot of interviews, and a lot of YouTube stuff on you throughout the years. I gotta also say the one thing I left out in your intro is, I've watched your career, not just as a fisherman, but also as an entity of many companies, an entrepreneur. Um, just blossom, which is amazing because you reap what you sow and you've sowed a lot, man. Um, I didn't know you could sow. How are your fingers? You have good fingers? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's amazing how like the whole progression has started to, you know, we first met, I, I want to say it was 06, no, 07 when, you know, let's talk about that for a minute, right? Am I right, Vin? Yeah, it it might have been 06. And you know why I'm saying that? I'm holding a flip phone. <laughs> that's right you got the flip phone on there that's um what's that's the first trip Vinny and i fished on and you know it's cloudy so maybe you and i can clear this up in my photo library it says it's 07 january or february maybe it was and i remember because i was I, I got in the band in winter 2005 we toured 06 and i remember billy saying i want to bring a boat down to florida mm -hmm. um and i want to fish Florida, whether it be kingfish, sailfish. And so Captain Gene and I, you know, I was hanging with Gene a lot. Gene, incidentally, as you know, this very well, you guys both know, Gene was originally a saxophone player and he couldn't play no more. So he became captain. And I had my captain's license. It was, you know, so we hit it off and we're getting ready to bring the boat down to Florida, down East Alexa. And Billy wanted to go sail fishing. And, uh, I think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, the way I remember it was, I think Gene talked to Billy, Billy called your boss Jimmy, and all of a sudden we had local knowledge, we have a captain and a mate, he's going to put you on a fish. So I remember Gene saying something like that. Does that sound right to you, Vin? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Um, that's exactly the way I remember it. The funny thing was, I can't remember if I got a text to call Gene or if Gene called me. You had a but I remember, <laughs> yeah, but uh, either way, I, I remember... Um, uh, 
Jimmy's manager is a guy named Mike Ramos, and Ramos called me and said, "Hey, you know, can you, take, can you go out with these guys and just show them a few things? You know, get the live bait guy that you know and do all that stuff." And I was yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah." And then when I talked to Gene, Gene was like, "Gene was funny. He was like, I really don't know much about fishing out here." He's like, "But we got this guy Carl coming, and he can help you do anything you need." <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah. <laughs> He'll be there right for you to help you. Anything you need. <laughs> Probably got in your way. Oh, yeah. man. That was a fun day. And, you it know, was... it was funny because we picked you up and you hooked up the live bait. We went to the a bait boat came, right? I think yeah. we went up to a bait boat and we got a whole bunch of bait. Was it down? I think it was, you came down to Miami. We fished out of government cut, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah. Because you you were up the road a little bit. And actually, it was up the road, too. I was, in, I was staying up in Lauderdale at that time. So yeah, I remember fishing that day, and I caught a couple kingfish. You know, we made the best. I, I remember the fleet was really slow, but Billy was enthralled with this whole Florida fishery. It's the first time. You know, I got to ask you, being a, you were a Florida guy at that time. Here we are. We show up in a 36 foot BHM down east. You know, freaking Long Island spear boat. You know, basically, yeah. and in a sailfish fleet. And so we're going out. We're like the odd ducks, man. We go out and. How, how, that must have been weird for you and kind of funny, right? I mean, you guys weren't fishing that type of gear, uh, equipment. I remember Gene told me a little bit. He told me about the boat, and I can't remember. I might have looked it up online, too, just to get a look at it. And I, I think I, either you had one or I brought a downrigger. We went, and I was just totally rigged up for slow trolling because I was like, I couldn't figure out much else to do in the boats. I saw all the rigging. I was like, I don't know if we're putting a kite up on this thing. You brought the downrigger. I brought the live well. Which, right. Remember, I had the oxygen. Yeah, <laughs> I brought the oxygen tank to get the live well going because we didn't have a, a through hole to keep. Uh, that's right. Now it's coming back. The bait was on speed. Yeah, it was like <laughs> red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. We caught a kingfish. <laughs> yeah. I remember it was a little rough. I don't. We didn't fish long. I think it was. It was kind of rough from what I remember. Yeah, it was. It was rough and. uh but that was my first uh, introduction, really. I mean, I fished Florida a little bit, but not really too much. I, my buddy had a boat, was running a boat down and uh, still does, an ocean reef, a Viking. So I would sail fish with him, kites and stuff. But I was, you know, it was my buddy. I was, you know, so I had no idea. And then I remember you had that really, what's that center console you had? That was a wonderful boat. Revenge. Oh, that was a cool boat, man. Cool. And we used to fish on that. And I became friendly with you, and we'd go kite fishing out of Hillsborough on that boat. That was a fun boat. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that's how that came about. Um, so, but I have to regress. When did, in 05, um, I know your plan were, uh, through your family, your plan was to serve your country. You're, you're getting ready, you know, uh, was it the Marines or Army you were checking out? I was okay. checking out the Marines. And to be honest, I kept it I kept it real quiet. I didn't really say much to anybody. I was kind of like, I was all, um, I don't know, I think it happened to a lot of people after 9-11, kind of felt like you had sure. to do something. I think especially mm -hmm. the, the age group that, 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 that we were in, you felt like, this, you know, you got to do something, you got to do something. So I remember I was thinking about it pretty hard because I, I, was, I was interested in pursuing a career in law enforcement. And like my dad kept telling me the best way to get get into it is if you go do a few years in, in the navy or the marine corps something like that you know then you get out and you'll, you'll you know you should be able to get right in yeah that was that was that was kind of the plan and then i definitely i, I didn't see the job with 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 you know jimmy coming at all it just kind of it just kind of it just kind of came out of nowhere you know well so, that's what i want to talk to you about because all your interviews say it comes out of nowhere but i know you better than that it's about relationships Everything we do, whether it be fishing or music, it's about the relationships you build and have. So how did that, how did it just pop in your hand? Because I know it didn't. It was through somebody, obviously. Yeah, so, so Spider Andreessen, uh, was Jimmy's fleet captain, he, he called, I, I don't know how many people he, he actually called, but I know that at least three of the people he called, my name came up because like one of them was John Brownlee. I was good, I'm real good friends with Ben Brownlee, John Brownlee's son. Yeah, absolutely. And he, John. He's been involved with all sorts of, you know, he's been the editor of Marlin. He's, he's, he's kind of a big name at TV, fishing TV shows. Yeah, man. And he, he kind of recommended me. And then like, you know, Roy Merritt, Put in a good word. Tom Green over Customer Unreal put in a good word. Three big, big and, three big boys right there. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I was at that, I was just doing, I was picking up any job I could at that time just to 
Just so you were made you were mating for other people you were captaining boats uh what was bef- yeah what were you doing prior to that i had i had just recently got a job a, a, it was a full-time gig on a, a 53 scarborough right like a, maybe a month before i, I ended up hearing the thing about about, about jimmy I remember the guy named jack rogers the guy that scarborough was running i told jack i said hey jack i said just to be transparent with you i said i just got this interview and and you know, and he was like, he was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then he was like, you know, go, go, you gotta, you know, you gotta pursue that. That's, that's one, you know, that's a, that's a really good, you know, opportunity that you're going to see places. Um, you know, and pretty much everybody I talked to about it said that try, but you know, I gotta be honest with you. I didn't think I was going to get the job to be really? completely honest. No, I was young, you know, and, and I didn't have the experience that I knew some of the other guys that, that were names were in the, you know, in the pot for the job had, but it, it didn't end up turning out that, that um, you know, Jimmy and, and everybody around him thought it was a good thing that I didn't have any bad habits, and they yeah. could kind of mold me to into what I want. And and I and I got to tell you, the funny thing is too is like Jimmy definitely molded me into what I am today because like I remember when I when I first got on the boat, he would say he would say things to me like, "Hey, you know, when we when we organize this, maybe we should do it like this. When we organize this, maybe we should do it like that." So I started I just anything he asked me to do, I would just do, and I started doing it that way going forward. Wow. You know, I didn't have any, you know, I wasn't stuck in my ways by any means. I was just trying to, to stay and do the right thing and sure. super thankful for, for the opportunity. So I would, you know, do anything I asked. And he's, you know, he's been around plenty of boats. He's a waterman. So yeah. it's not like he, he didn't, he didn't give me good advice and steer me in the right direction, you know? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't mean to jump around, but I'm going to because, uh, just because I'm a trumpet player and I have ADD, I'm a mess. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but you know, I'm going to jump around just for the simple reason is Sarah, I've seen interviews and read some things that you love fishing. You were fishing when you were young, you're into it. Um, you were working for, uh, the wounded warrior project and what? Oh, seven, Oh six. Uh, when did you start with them? How'd that come about for you? Yeah, we were taking, we were working, Vinny and I were, well, we were working together a little bit prior to FFO taking, get, becoming an organization, I should say. Okay. Um, but it all kind of started with, we were taking veterans out and it was just kind of, it was just kind of thrown together, taking some guys out fishing, um, you know, minimal people, like I can't even, under a handful of people, veterans would come in and we'd fish with them and then um things kind of blossomed and turned into something that we didn't even think it would turn into which was nice but yeah basically we were taking a handful of veterans fishing through wounded warrior project uh, we would have them come in mainly in florida right they were mainly coming in and driving in to south cool. florida from everywhere in from florida Gainesville or cal i remember bird yeah. was from a, not bird uh, a couple of the guys i've seen Drove all night. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, no, People nothing. were landing with Tampa. There were a lot from Tampa because the VA is over there. Sure. Um, so Jackson, there were Jacksonville, Tallahassee area. So they would all drive in from Florida, and um, then you know, in 2014, well, it kind of evolved a little bit, and then in 2014, no, 2013, right? 2013, 2013. Vinny was kind of like, you know, a couple people approached me in the community and asked why we don't do like our own thing. And because there were people here, we live in Lighthouse Point, and there were people here in Lighthouse Point that were really wanting to get really involved okay. taking veterans fishing. And so one of our now board members, Greg Edwards, said to us, well, why don't you guys do your own thing? And it was, we had a lot going on. We had just had Joey. Um, There was just a lot going on at the time. Vinny was getting super, super busy with work. Um, I mean, that's a full-time gig right there, just running away with boats. Right. So we were like, well, let's give it a try. And if it works, great. And if it, you know, if it doesn't work, then we'll scale it back a little bit. So it kind of worked. You know, Greg helped us launch. um, He hosted a cocktail party with a bunch of his clients. And that was like kind of the kickoff that, threw everything up and over the edge to create FFO and which is Freedom Fighter Outdoors. And for everybody calls it FFO for short, but it's Freedom Fighter Outdoors. 
And um, it kind of blossomed into doing from like one event to two events a year to four to six events a year. And um, it went from maybe two to six veterans to almost 30 veterans in event. So it kind of grew into something that we never thought possible. And then it gave us the opportunity to not just invite Florida veterans, but to have any veteran from all over the world fly in Mm -hmm. um, because the whole purpose of FFO is to bring veterans in and give them really no excuse not to attend unless they have an appointment at the VA that they finally got, which is unbelievable. But FFO um, runs on private donations and FFO covers the cost of a veteran's flight or transportation, lodging, and all of their meals, any fishing equipment, all the boats, everything's there and ready to go. So it leaves little to no reason not to want to come to an FFO event if you're a veteran. Uh, So that's kind of, I forgot where I was going with it, but that's kind of where, where it became, where it became FFO. Yeah. The, the, we always wanted to keep it small and united, like a community front um, without getting to a point of where it was conglomerate. Yeah. Like the whole purpose was to keep, well, the whole purpose was for you to come on an event as a veteran and feel leaving like after you've left the event to feel like you were a part of something and not feel like, well, so-and-so didn't talk to me. And I didn't, you know, I never even got to meet that person. The whole purpose is for everybody to have an opportunity to have a conversation with every single person there. And although I know that's not always possible, we try to make it pretty possible as much as we can. So we always try to really get to know each veteran, make them feel like they're, we call it the FFO family, make them feel like they're part of the FFO family, leave developing friendships um, and camaraderie because nobody understands what a veteran's gone through unless you're another veteran. Um, so we try to develop that sort of mentality and keep it, I think the reason the veterans love it so much is because it is very small and tight knit. Um, and while it's small and tight knit, we're still able to reach veterans from all over. I think the furthest veteran we've ever had was from Alaska, Hawaii, Alaska and Hawaii kind of. So um, we've we've tried to give everybody a chance to come on an event um, and give them that opportunity to have that experience. And, you know, it's difficult because COVID hit and sure. none of us could gather, but we adjusted, we did outdoor paddleboard events where it was only five to 10 people at a time. And everything was like set outside and sit spread far apart. Uh-huh. Picnic tables on the picnic beach. tables on the yeah. We tried like, to yeah. I like we, picnic tables. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get away from any of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I to, you know what I mean? Sorry, I got to bust your chops. <laughs> We're too close. So the whole COVID thing. I mean, you guys, you guys ducked and weaved. You figured out how to make these events work, which is amazing. A lot of people weren't doing nothing. Yeah. And thankfully we had people on board that supported it. And we had a guy, um, uh, JP come in with all of his live paddle boards and say, well, I'll, I'll do it. I'll take them all out. Um, no fee. He didn't charge anybody anything. And he did it out of wanting to do it and wanting to give back. And, you know, we just adjusted. There's a guy, Jose, he works at merits. Um, his full-time job is working at merits. He has a family. But somehow he finds free time to take veterans. Fresh, fresh water. He's the fresh water guy, if I remember yeah. right. Right? Bass yeah. guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he's a great guy. Tell Jose, about him. Yeah. Jose Carbonell, He his boat is called Glades Jet. And he also does charters. Awesome. Um, he's he's like top guy to fish with. He's amazing. He's good with families, good with kids, good with veterans. And every veteran, he's not a veteran, but every veteran has come back and said, he just made me feel good about myself, better about myself. Um, so we adjusted, we did those one-on-one things every, you know, we had to go through all the loops and hoops and all that stuff, but we, we got through it. It was tough, but we got through it and we're slowly getting back into the swing of things. Well, I know you guys are, and you know, both you and Vinny are, have the same, um, just the same selfless, uh, just humility that you have. So 
you know, I'm going to get personal because I know you very well. I'm going to drag it out of you. What brought you specifically? And, you know, I, you, you and Vinny met uh, doing these veteran programs with Wounded Warriors. What was the catalyst for you, Sarah, t- to reach out and help out with W uh, with the Wounded Warrior Project? I, you know, it's interesting because I had, since I was little, I always, I don't talk about it much, but since I was little, I always had this drawing to veterans. I've always had this thing that, I don't know, that just made me feel like we got to do more. We're not doing enough. This country isn't doing enough. The world isn't doing enough. And these people come in and they're so selfless and they give us the opportunity to even be here by doing what they do. And it just, ever since I was a little girl, the, the military just drew a, drew me to like wanting to do something Love it. Um, and give back. And uh, my grandfather was actually in the military. He was a police officer in the military. Um, and I really didn't know that till later on in life, even till after I started, Vinny and I started doing this. So that was interesting to find out. But um I, it just is, you know, some people are drawn to dogs and animals and children and uh, all these things. And Vinny and I are also drawn to all those things and all these different charities that are so great and do so good in the world. But something, could, I think one of our connections was our um, passion for giving back to veterans. I think that's one of the bigger things that did bring us together. Well, it's apparent, you know, it's apparent. And, uh, I love to hear that story. That's, uh, you know, I, I was curious. I always, on these hangs, I always learn, you know, I think I know my friends and you guys are my friends. I think I know them, but I always learn more. So I know Vinny's story, but the, I think the people here, whether it be musicians or fish heads or non-musicians, a lot of people don't know Vinny's story. So we touched on it. Vinny was talking about jumping into the military, the Jimmy Buffett gig captain as captain. Um, I regress now. See how I jump around? It's my ADD, Vin. I'm sorry, man. So just touch me, touch that story. You're working with Jimmy now. You're running a boat. You're going between Montauk. You're hitting Bahamas. You're, you're fishing Florida. What was the catalyst for you with, hey, man, I want to, well, I know, I know the story, but divulge some of your reasoning of how and your mentality of how it came about for you bringing veterans fishing. Well, when I, when I got the job with, with Jimmy, to be honest, I mean, I put it, I kind of put it out of my head. I was having fun. I was busy. And then uh, my, my youngest brother joined the Marine Corps. And then, all of a sudden, yeah, Joey, yeah. And I started feeling, I just started feeling guilty about, like, it didn't seem, it didn't seem fair. Like, you know, just, just like he, he went through like the basic school and he was up in Quantico and he was doing all this stuff. And I saw him and his friends were like, you know, they're, a lot of hard work, like true, real hard work. And, and I was like, man, it doesn't make sense. Like I'm getting, I get paid to, for, a, I'm doing a hobby, you know, sure. like we had a hobby, you know, don't get me wrong. I work, but you know what I mean? It's a hobby. I love it. And you, you love what you do. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. So I started to feel guilty and figure out like, then, you know, just literally just felt guilty. I want to do something to, to give back. And then that's when, it, that's when I actually reached out to a wounded war project. And the funny thing is when I reached out to a wounded war project, I just did like a Google search on my laptop one night. It was like yeah. late I'm just thinking about it. And I actually thought wounded war project was like a government run organization just because I didn't, didn't read too much. I just kind of got there and I was like, Oh wow, this is cool. And it said, you can either donate money or, or like gift in kind, like donate goods or donate a service. So I wrote this little blurb about how I'd be interested in taking a few guys out fishing. It was like two and a half weeks. I get a phone call from a Jacksonville, Florida number. Answer it. It was a, a guy named John Pruden, who was an injured army vet, and he was an outreach coordinator for the War Project. And I, I tell him, you know, I'm interested in taking two or three guys out. We talk, and then I, I go back and, um, like, I, I work with I work with a guy named Tyler Andreessen, and Tyler's uh, was Spider's son. And I said to Tyler, I said, hey. Um, I'm thinking about doing this. Do you want to, do you want to fish with me? And he said, did you, did you tell spider? Did you tell Jimmy? Did you tell him? I said, no. And he says, I think you should. He says, you know, Jimmy's a big veteran supporter. You know, he's, he's talking about Jimmy Buffett, everybody. He's, you know, yeah. we're dropping, you know, a lot of people still can't wrap their head around it that, you know, here you are. He's a buddy to you now. I mean, you know, so you called and you, you were uncomfortable calling him, I bet too. Right. Well, no. So the funny thing is I said, no, no, I didn't. And then spider ends up saying something 
I call I, when when I'm I, I call on Mr. B. I'm just saying Jimmy just because you know we're easier to keep track of what we're talking about. But you know when um we're we're you know Spider said something to him and then he was like oh we should take should take my boat which was the ride of the ship at the time and he said she'd take my boat they'd be way more comfortable. So then I was like oh wow that's cool that's a cool experience but I could I could take four guys and easy. So I called John Pruden back and and I I told him who you know who I work for and that we could take Jimmy and there was a long pause and. The funny thing is, is I know John was trying to figure out if I was totally full of it or not. or not. Yeah. <laughs> right. And and then John was like, wow, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then so we kind of just pick a date. These guys drive down. They like leave like uh, Ocala and Jack. Like John kind of picks up all these guys on the way down. They leave at like 2, 1.30 in the morning. They get to meet Crack of Dawn. We go out. We fish. You know, we, we fished for half a day because we ran on a bait by 11.30 in the morning. We caught... We had a double of yellow fins. We caught three black fins, a bunch of mahis, a bunch of bonitas, a bunch of kingfish, and it it was a totally insane fishing day, yeah. um, which then got a lot of attention. Like the Sun Sentinel, the local newspaper picked it up because we we did so well fishing. Like you know, you usually don't catch yellow fins in a hundred feet off the floor. Great article, you guys. Go on, go on. Uh, it's on the FFO site, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you have a news news uh, tab on that, and it's it's a great great article on his website. So it's not a fish story. Vinny's not telling you a fish story. It's, it's in black and white. Read it. It's a great day. Sorry. It's a totally insane day. And then from there, we had a few like friends or people. Some people I didn't even didn't even know. They reached out and said, "Hey, if you do this again, I would like to take a few guys out on our boat." So then you know, we it started like the, you know the snowball started rolling and sure. We started taking, you know, another boat came with us. They took two or three guys. I take two or three. And then now, you know, then all of a sudden, like Sarah said, it worked up to 25 guys, 30 guys at a time. Um, and we never went over that because that was like the point where you lose track of, like, you feel like you couldn't remember everybody's name. Once you were 25, yeah. It's you know, yeah, it's a lot. Um, so. I think your popcorn is done, Ben. <laughs> I said you're gonna you're gonna hear his text come through. <laughs> you know it's really funny because I'm gonna call hot it. pocket is yeah. ready. <laughs> it was really funny that that was a, a veteran who's watching who helps us with FFO and he was just giving Sarah graphics. He Sarah you're on no, camera. That, that's your phone. Oh, that's he funny. said you should <laughs> smile. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. <laughs> I love it. That's the hang. That's the community. That's what I want. Yeah, we're all hanging out. That's why is, is technology crazy? How that, that works? I love this, man. It's great. Yeah, and I can't figure out how to keep my laptop from. I have my phone on sound. I can't figure Just out. Do my not disturb. Laptop. You got to go to the right corner. Let it ring. Let it ring because I'm enjoying it. It's bringing everybody together. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, let, I'm waiting let, for one of the kids to come out here and make popcorn anymore. You know more yeah, about no, it. Be great. Do not disturb. I got to find it. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Um, so that being said, um, hey, Stephen, are you, did we lose Stephen? Is he, <laughs> is he making snowmen out in Chicago? What the hell is Stephen doing? Making yeah. snow angels again with his bad finger? Yeah, right in the yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Got ice yeah. down that finger, man. <laughs> so w- while you're here, uh, you know, Vinny and Sarah were talking about that first trip. Can you pull up that beautiful green Rybovich boat, Last Mango 2? Um, Jimmy, I remember Billy always talking about, man, Jimmy's got a really beautiful Rybo. I want to check it out. It's a really cool boat. And uh, <clears throat> I had a friend named Vinny LaSource. I used to keep my boat near Vinny's house <laughs> back in the day. See it. There, there it is. is. Okay. All right. So Thanks. let's just, just talk about that and we'll open up to some fish heads. I was the boat I met you on. Um, well, actually, it was the Revenge, but that's the boat you were. That was the first boat you captained for, for, for Mr. B, right? That's correct. And that was a 42. What was that? A 44? 42 walk around. That was a great boat. What happened to that boat? What, what, what did you guys do? You sold it? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Well, it actually, it actually, um, like, we don't really talk about it a bunch, but like, Mr. B decided to donate it. And it went to a, it went through a, like, a underprivileged children's charity beautiful wow there it is he doesn't no. talk about it because he's a humble guy yeah there yeah. it is that was a beautiful boat yeah so you start on that we're going to touch on the freeman in the next segment here but before we get there let's say hello to some people and see who's hanging out with us um we we know that vinnie's friend uh is busting sarah 
So we know someone's watching us. Busting in. <laughs> it's my phone. I thought it was Sarah's phone. It's your phone. You're pretty rude. Not, is it your flip phone, Vin? Is it your flip phone? No. I got an, I, I got an iPhone now. Look at this thing. <laughs> that was that, you know what's so funny? When you sent that picture today, I said to Sarah, I said, when I started working for Mr. B, they gave me a Motorola Razor. Do you remember that? And I do. My friends were like, you can take pictures with that? <laughs> Yep. Crazy stuff, man. Wow. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and I think I was trying to find the bait guy. There he was, he was late. Yeah, we were sitting in the, near the inlet. We were yeah. the yeah. look like goggles. Those yeah, were cool. Big <laughs> Those were cool. Look, 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 look at, look at, look at your hair. Look at my hair. I know how long your hair yeah. was. Yeah. I, 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 no I, grays. We Definitely no there. grays. What yeah. the hell? Both of you no grays. What happened? <laughs> oh my God. That's not right. We got mature, right? Sour got mature. <laughs> Let's not get carried away, all right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, now we got a we got a pretty good hang going on over here in the chat. Um, I know uh, we got a lot of the hang regulars, so thank you guys for our uh, our repeat customers. Of course, our hang president Noah is here for the sixty fourth episode in a row. God bless uh, Noah. Yep, the hang monster, Frank Benici. Hey, Frank uh, Benici, happy birthday, you old coot. Yep. Frank's Got birthday a... yesterday. Happy birthday. Oh, was it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We got uh, 16 again. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> we got uh, Greg and Brenda down in Missouri. I know them well, otherwise Should. known as dad. Actually, <laughs> you know what? Since we're talking about since we're talking about this stuff, um, yeah. give my give my dad and uh, and my my stepmom Brenda a little shout out here. Um, yep. They do. Uh, my dad is the is the state commander uh, in Missouri, and he uh, handles like the line of duty death uh, funerals for um, EMS services. So oh, wow. um, he's done he's done everything from getting training sessions set up to. Um, to actually handling the funeral services and setting up funeral services and things like that. Um, I, I think it's even gone as far as having uh, landing pads for helicopters <laughs> uh, made so they could uh, do like the flight for life helicopters and stuff. So a little, little shout out for dad there since we're on the subject yeah. of, of helping out. So um, cool. Cool. A uh, couple guys um, that I'm sure you guys know well. Um, I see a Rhonda hanging out in the chat here with us. Uh, Rhonda Bunker um, mm -hmm. says, my favorite two people here hanging out. Um, we have a Bird Jones hanging out in the chat. Says, uh, actions and words always reflect your heart, Sarah and V. Um, so uh, they're, they're having a, a good time hanging out with us in the chat. So... Uh, keep the keep the chat going, guys. If you guys have questions and stuff, you know, feel free to f throw them out here. I'm uh, I'm definitely watching for them. Um, you know, we don't really have any questions right now. We got everybody just kind of saying hello and and uh, voicing their their happiness with you guys joining us. And uh, a couple people mentioned the Orlando show. Carl, um, Scott, uh, Scott Darcy um, said Orlando was awesome. Um, Thanks, Scott. Also, he gave a little shout out for the wonderful world video that we mentioned earlier. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Scott. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on in the chat right now, guys. So cool. Well, you know, again, you know, I love how, you know, it, again, it comes around community, and as a musician, it's always about communication, trying to uh, communicate musically, uh, 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 paint the scheme of, pa 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 almost like a painting of, you know, a time and place. And what's to me amazing is when you go, when I go fishing and when I'm outdoors, it's the most peace and solace that I have. And you always have, I always try to pick, and I think everybody who does this, who, who likes doing it, you always want to hang out with people who have the same like-minded mentality. Um, and you rarely go hunting or fishing with somebody who you don't want to go hunting and fishing with again, unless they're real morons. You don't invite them on a boat or you, he comes on with a banana, right, Vin? That's right. <laughs> but um, again, it comes out to the community um, of just, you know, it's a, it's just, it's really hard to explain, but there's some patico there, I think. Um, and 
So whether it be a young kid, an old man, I, I used to love taking my father, my late father-in-law. We lost him uh, a while ago. Um, I used to love taking him fishing, man. He was a fishing freak. But I remember, man, he was always he was always the high hook on the boat. He would never say anything, and he'd be bailing striped bass and flounder and fluke over the rails 10, 10 to 1 on everybody. And so whether you be a veteran or a friend or uh, – you know, just uh, or family. There's there's something that I think is very important that for me as a musician is it's such a great creative outlet. And I think a lot of musicians who are on here who are also reckless uh, uh, to the point is they're night guys. They don't go out and you know they don't want to get up in the morning and stuff like that. I think it's very important to be well rounded. And same thing with fishing guys. You know, I can't tell you how many fishing friends I have that haven't been to a concert. And I said, well, come to a Billy concert. And they come and they're like blown away. Um, so I think there's some type of kind of cool thing there. I'll shut up now about that, but that's just my own mentality. But the community here, there's nothing off limits. Just throw out some questions or, or statements, please, because uh, we live for that. So enough about that. Let's talk about, so you're doing the Wounded Warriors 2014. You're jumping um, on to now, you're in your kitchen. You make the logo for FFO. Um, you decide to do Freedom Fighters Outdoors. So you guys segued into this program. You now started this. Um, was there, obviously, that, that was a pivotal time in your life. Joey was very young, right? Um, how did that, did you have a, a game plan or did you, like Sarah said earlier, did, did it just kind of come organically? Did, did you say, okay, by 2019, if we're not doing well, we're going to shut the doors or uh, what was the mentality like? How'd that come? So it was, it was like the last week of December. Joey was, Joey was born on the 18th of December in 2013. And it was like the last week of December. I remember I was holding Joey and he fell asleep and I was at the kitchen table and I was eating and then I, I think Ella had like a coloring book and or colored pencils and a piece of paper. So I was just sitting, I didn't want to get up and I didn't want to wake him up. And I just started thinking and drawing and I drew the, I basically drew what the logo is now, of, you know, of FFO. Cool. And I was thinking about what, there's a, there's a guy that, that we live near. Um, he's, He's a he's a financial planner, so he's a real he's a really smart guy to begin with, and he owns his own uh, financial planning business with a couple of partners. But anyway, long story short, Greg said to me like in October of thirteen, he says, "Hey, did you ever think about doing doing your own thing and maybe putting a little more personal touch on this? You know, did everything? I think you could get a lot of community support." And he kind of he just kind of threw that at me, and then I didn't said, "I don't know, I don't know." You don't think I'm like sounds like a whole lot, a whole lot of work, right? Yeah. And a lot of more, a lot more things to keep track of. And then he said, you know, through a lot of people that I know, um, he's like, I think we could get some financial support too. And he just, he kind of did one of those things like he hit me in the arm and walks away. And I did not think about it much until that night I started thinking, I was like, you know, maybe Greg is right. Maybe we should do something, you know, because the other thing was, is like that, that same week, um, there's a, a local, um, local, local news channel. There's a guy named Mike D. Pasquale who saw a, the Sun Sentinel, a Sun Sentinel article about one of the, another fishing trip we did, which we had another really good day, similar to the first time we caught the elephants. And he, he, he called me about um, doing, like literally putting it on like the evening news, what we were doing. So I was like, man, this thing, it's getting like, you know, the snowball's growing, like this is getting traction. Maybe, yeah. maybe we should try to do this. So I, I started drawing the logo. I said something to Sarah. I could tell Sarah was totally skeptical. I mean, she was only like, she was had a week old newborn. You know, and, and we had a lot of other people going. What are you nuts? Yeah, you can tell she definitely thought it was nuts. But the funny what thing you is, are. Like, not, not you. Yeah, you are. I have this, I have this weird thing where like I'm I'm like obsessed with trying to make people like proud of, proud of me at the same time. I don't know why I've always felt you that like way. making things happen. Like making like things happen. Yeah. Thinks, if he thinks about something, he's like, that's it. We're like, it's gotta happen. It's, happen. it's gotta be successful. It's gotta, no matter what it is. And I'm like, well, what if, what if it doesn't? He's like, it will, we have to just make it happen. That's yeah. just how he is. So anyway, so there was no saying no, it was like, oh, we're gonna, is... so like yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> and then I said something, I remember I said something to my dad and then a funny thing, which I never really talk about either. Is I said something to my dad, my dad was like, well, in order to start it, you gotta, you gotta put some money out to start a 501c3. You know, you gotta get a lawyer to drop the paperwork. You gotta do these bylaws. Website. You gotta get a website. 
And my dad put up a couple thousand bucks and said, this is my contribution. So oh, when wow. he said that, and then I got, I got Greg Edwards saying that he was going to throw a cocktail party to raise funds. I was like, so many people are getting behind this. You got to do it. Yeah, we just did it. And, and here we are um, eight years later. And uh, yeah, right? eight, eight. Think? Yeah. yeah, eight, eight years later. And it's um, anyway, good. Really, it's going really good. Yeah. No, and, and you know, it's funny because you and I always talked throughout the years, even when you were doing a wounded warrior project, whether I was living in Long Island or uh, I've been down, down now here in Tampa, St. Pete for nine years. Oh, my God. But I know we've always talked about it. I've always wanted to do something um, with you guys. Uh, I always thought it was just a wonderful thing because you bring up the, the, the best word I know of, a proud. Um, everybody just, everybody wants just, it, it, it's you know, like you said, there's a guilt that goes along with not serving your country. You know, we live in a, in a free country and it's like, sometimes I take for granted, I'm not talking we, people can take uh, uh, take for granted our, our, our freedoms and liberties when you're out outdoors, you know, it's the, you know, you're offshore, it's the best thing in the world or you're, you know, it's just, um, so um, where I'm going with this is, it's not just the FF, O project, which is amazing in itself. Um, just two other projects in there. Well, the other project I'd love to talk about since we're on FFO is the FFO outreach program that you have and your offers with the outreach because it's not, you're not a one trick pony. You're, you're the 501c, the outreach program with the 501c is you're not just taking these guys fishing for a day. Um, you're again developing relationships with these people, uh, men and women, and you're creating a community for and with them in their needs. Just like you said, I didn't serve, you guys didn't serve. We don't know what it is to serve. Mm -hmm. My dad served. He talked about some things that was good and some really bad things too. Um, and so, I'm just going to leave you with the ball of the wonderful catalyst of Freedom Fighters Outreach Program. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So what we did was, um, it was actually a few of the veterans that we became really friend friendly with and came on a, or had already come on a couple of the events. Bird is one. I've, I, I, I yeah. love Bird, man. I, I seen a, I'm sorry. I seen the video of Bird, man. What he said a, a, multiple times that he uh, reiterated today, I felt like I was there. It was just really my props to bird anyway sorry got excited. No, bring up, bird, bird's, a, bird's a big supporter um of all other but i should say a mentor of a lot of the other vendor vet, veterans and you know just a, he's a big supporter of ffo as long as, as well as being one of our outreach guys but so he's an outreach guy yeah bird's he is an outreach guy oh, bird oh, is one of them. all right cool yeah so we a few um you know a few of the veterans had had said hey have you noticed that um when so i i'm trying to think about this to make it the most concise and short so some of the guys that had already been on event they knew what was they knew what to expect like they know the next morning we're going out we're going offshore sure. so when sarah was kind of picking the veterans who were going to go on the boat she would pick a veteran that had already gone before with okay. maybe three or four guys that had never been and then we would we, were, we started out calling them like the, the group leader or the the group leader for for you know we the name of the boat like say for example it was last mango we'd say all right you know bird you're you're the group leader for last mango and you have the other two or three guys so he, he would know exactly what to expect where to go you know make sure the guys grab their sandwich in the morning because you know or, or whatever all that stuff sure so and then we started to realize this um this camaraderie and this network where, like where the veterans would be on the event and then you know fast forward two or three days later they all find each other on facebook and they're all talking, talking to each other. They built this network of friends and not only just the veterans on the event, it was also the volunteers. Now they're all Facebook friends. They're all chatting. They're all commenting, liking each other's stuff, checking on each other. Hey, how you doing? You know, I'm going to be in your town. What are you up to? Mm -hmm. So I really, it was, it was literally, it wasn't, wasn't my idea. It wasn't Sarah that it was kind of like a group idea. We we're like, Hey, maybe we should start this outreach. And then we, you know, FFO outreach, we picked, I don't know, how many guys we got now? Seven? Rhonda. I think know. seven. Yeah. Rhonda's now Rhonda's now um, kind of heading up our, our, our outreach program. But um anyway, now when we it was one outreach officer per boat. 
and those guys are the are the team leaders but as well they go out and they try to find new veterans throughout the year you know whether it's at the va or the vfw or just that's any kind of veterans event they'll try to you know find recruit through word of mouth or just a network of their own friends um, of new veterans and like I said, we try to keep it to, to injured veterans, but at this at the same time, like if you look at the criteria, we say like Purple Heart or 30% disabled are criteria, but there's always like this fine line of like, like sometimes we get guys who are really injured and they'll say, hey, can my, I call him like my battle buddy? You know, this guy saved my life. He was with me when I got hurt and he might not be injured or she might not be injured. And we, of yeah. course they can come, you know. They also, they also help. Uh, the outreach officers are also helping like this year starting to get into fundraising, attending fundraisers, speaking on behalf of FFO at fundraisers. Um, so they they do a whole do a a whole list of things yeah. and um, you know help us uh, if we have a sponsor at an event, they introduce the sponsor. they kind of we kind of let them take over the event now with in terms of introducing people um, that are speaking at the event. And things like that so they do they do a little bit of everything now i love it so you know again it, it, it's it's the it's the beautiful thing of you're putting together you're creating a big family a community yeah you know, it's just not hey let's go fishing that's you know so you know so you have those two entities um and then you also have last mango boat works correct which is a whole nother thing that we're going to talk about. But before we even get there, one of the older questions I'm going to pose to you that I'm jumping around like a crazy man um, is let's talk about JB, Jimmy Buffett for a minute. I know he's proud of you. I know he is through Billy. Billy's talked about, you know, um, and, uh, you know, just how your name came up when we were first fished with Billy and, uh, you know, and, and, and their relationship. Um, so Jimmy what do you think how does jimmy run i mean he's very he gives you he, he, he i know he's proud of you and he like you said he let let you use the boat for the program um i've i've seen things where he's come and hung out and met everybody and hung and take you know been totally a humil human being and which is also billy he's a man's man that's what i love about these guys the superstars but they're just down home good people so you got these different things you know you're fishing boat captain you're traveling you got ffo you have a beautiful family um you're now developing a new boat line and a merch light line that's going to help out um that feeds back into the nonprofit. was jimmy a proponent did you use him as a role model with margarita uh margaritaville i mean his entities he's just billy's always said he's just such a smart businessman how did that do you guys do you ever have a little talk about that or did you use him as a business model to say hey how should i grow this so we can help more people out is there anything am i touching on anything here or am i just blown there you are so the the whole the last mango which is now a brand this, this last mango brand that's been created um um uh, mr b or jimmy he it was gotta be probably 2014, 15, somewhere in there. He talked and touched on it about how, hey, you know, we, we had somebody approach us and offer to buy the, 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 the shirts, the boat shirts. And we were always, you know, we, people people were nice and they were in the dock, you know, we would, we would throw them a shirt. And then um, something happened where I think on his social media team, somebody said something like, you know, when you wear that, when, when, when Jimmy would wear the shirt on his, his social media, a lot of people would message, how do you get those shirts? They said, you know, I don't need to make money selling my boat shirts, but what if we did sell them and all the money went to charity? Wow. That was, that was years ago. And every, it was probably every year we'd kind of touch on it. Like, Hey, maybe, maybe that would work. Maybe that would work. And then it was fall. It was October of 2019. And, um, um, one of, one of like, one of, one of Jimmy's basically managers, uh, a guy named Darren, Darren's around our age. And he tells, he tells Darren and I, he says, you know, maybe we should pursue this last mango brand and let's, let's, you know, he kind of, he kind of wrote like a, a business plan or a business model. Like, this is what we should do. Nice. Talk everything about the social media, how we should start it, get the website, let's do this. So then, um, and then he said, you know, all profits can go back to Freedom Fighter Outdoors and then Sing for Change is, is a foundation that, that um, I, Jimmy started years ago where a dollar of every ticket sale 
would go to Singing for Change and Singing for Change supports all kinds of different charities. Like really? 501c3s can apply to Singing for Change for basically like almost like a grant. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a, there's tons of different charities they support. Okay. Um, so you said, you know, it, we could it could benefit both, but it could also benefit like throughout that year if um, say if there's a natural disaster, a hurricane or, you know, like with it's been COVID, we've been donating to charity COVID. Shit, COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> COVID charities. Holy I'm drinking God. water. That's the problem. Maybe you could have made it a I almost made an espresso. I said I wanted to get the record for the longest Maybe. hang ever. <laughs> Swordfish. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's been COVID charities lately. But we've been supporting a bunch of other a bunch of other charities. <laughs> But it was his idea. It was his idea. It's like he's 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 the he's the catalyst behind a lot of it. I'll tell you, like FFO wouldn't be what it is if he didn't support it. I mean, if, if he's supporting something, it's easy for a lot of people to get behind. It gets a lot more of attention. So I'm sure if I didn't if I didn't work for him, I don't think FFO would have. Yeah, who knows? If it would have been anything. It definitely wouldn't be as big as it is. I mean, figure now. Like now we have we're partnering with Garmin. We're partnering with Costa Sunglasses. I mean, you know, Night Eyes. Those that innovation company. There's a lot of big companies that are getting behind it. Um, yeah, you know, I believe in. There's no sense. You have a reckless abandon, and your boss has a reckless abandon. Um, there's no, there's no such thing as failure. Failure. Let's just do it. Let's make it happen. Execute, mm-hmm. which is amazing. It's, I think these companies, like you said, Garmin, uh, you know, uh, JL, all these companies, yeah. are, you know, they all, you know. So I think that's important. Um, so. You have the last mango boat works all the money goes towards the ffo in the merchandise um you're running around in this nice 42 uh ribo <clears throat> you run into you buy a 33 was it the 33 freeman at that point they were making the 33. yeah there was a well so um jimmy wanted a, a pilot house just because we fished up north so much yeah. and we went I, I had a few friends who had been on the Freeman boats and they were raving about them. And I rode on one and I was, I was a believer in it right away. I was like, wow, this thing's pretty unreal. Um, I told Jimmy about it. We went up to Charleston, which is where Freemans are built. We met with uh, Billy Freeman and Scott Cothran. And we asked if they would consider building, a, it, was a, it was a 34 Freeman, because they stopped at 33 and they turned it to 34. Yeah. Uh, they ever, they considered building a 34 pilot house and they were they were too behind like I don't want to say too behind but they had too many orders <laughs> they were they were behind on production basically it was like a two and a half year maybe even three year at the time wait list wow. so they couldn't go throw in that kind of project and back up production even more yeah. um, which is a good problem to have for them but they said oh we can't do it um, but I had a friend who saw that there was a 33 pilot house the only Freeman that had ever been made pilot house that was on the whole truth so Jimmy was like, I wonder if I wonder if that guy would consider selling it, right? So I literally start scouring to try to find this boat. Um, I end up hearing this rumor it's in the Outer Banks, of North Carolina. So I call people I know in North, in North Carolina. I end up calling, a, like, if you're a boat person, you know Spencer boats, Paul Spencer. Absolutely. Paul Spencer's got two sons, Cliff and Danny. I'm friendly with both of them. I met both of them through you at m- multiple shows. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I call. I, I can't remember which. I think it was Cliff said to me obx marina right in wanchi the thing's in a it's in, a, it's in dry storage it's right there so i call obx marina there was a dock master there and i said hey i'm trying to get a hold of the owner of this 33 freeman and he was very skeptical but nice but skeptical like why yeah. and i said hey we're just interested to see if he's interested in selling. he's like i don't think he's interested in selling i said but they listen could you just pass him the message sure I just give him my number and see and it was like a week and a half later uh, his name was Tim, um, calls me and tells me he's not really interested in selling it, but he was half interested in hearing me out, like why we were interested in what we were looking for. He calls me again, like a week later and says that, um, I can't remember if it was his, I think it was his son or his son-in-law, but either way, his daughter or his, or his son was having a baby and he was losing his fishing partner. Wow. And he said, so maybe I'd consider selling it. Yep. So I just said, Hey, what day's good for you? We'll, we'll yeah. come down. Well, so I think it was like two days later, we fly down and I didn't tell Tim who I worked for at all. And 
it was it was me, Jimmy, and then a good friend of ours named Bob, who was a, a Yamaha master mechanic. And we brought him because they both had Yamaha on it. So we wanted Bob to check him out. He brought his diagnostic computer and everything. Yeah. Full time Tim's talking to us has no idea it's, it's Jimmy Buffett at all. No clue. Um, no. Story. And then, the story. That's great. and they're talking about all sorts of stuff. They're talking about bone fishing, fly fishing, fishing boats, you know, places. What both guys do talking about boats. Yeah. And we're on the plane going, we're leaving. And Tim texts me and he says, Hey, just out of curiosity, what is, what does your boss do? I said, he's in the entertainment business. <laughs> he says, what do you mean? And he said, does he own like nightclubs? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said no i said he's a singer i said i, I said you know in, i can't remember what i said i either told him right out or i said what songs he sang something sure. like that and he just he wrote back like a couple of profanities like are you <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. like no um and this is after he had already agreed to sell sell us the boat and everything and he just couldn't believe it and he was more excited that he was going to get a bill of sale signed by jimmy than anything <laughs> absolutely i love that um, anyway you know, that all worked out so we get the 33 freeman and then um it evolved to we bought the 33 freeman because we were going to repower the rod so it was going to be down for a few months so that's why we bought this it was almost like the interim boat sure and then when we had it we honestly realized that we were more comfortable on that boat than the ravage and it was a lot faster so yep. jimmy had the idea of maybe building a bigger one Okay, so I'm going to stop here because I, I see the chat um, because this next, the bigger one is that, that whole story. And, and Sarah, I love it because your social media, I don't know if it was you or your team, when the boat was being built was something, it was like waiting for a Christmas present. Uh, you know, it was like seeing the whole thing move, move through the line. It was really wonderful. We're going to touch on that. But before I do, I do see some, 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 some comments and i can't read them is there anything we should hit before we move on to the next boat steven let's see um we did have a couple questions um uh first of all bird commented on the skater cut that Vinny had in that picture when you guys first met <laughs> <laughs> so had it had to get that in there um oh, <laughs> Rhonda... <laughs> Rhonda is asking if uh, a shameless plug for the awesome raffle that you guys are doing through FFO is possible. <laughs> shameless plug. Yeah. yeah so, Carl, Carl, it's okay Carl, with you, the shameless plug. Go for it. I don't know about it. Rhonda, Rhonda's daughter-in-law is getting married, and Rhonda had a jean jacket, like, hand-painted. Rhonda's son that got married. What? <laughs> Rhonda's no wait. Well, the skater haircut well, that got him confused. Oh, well, yeah. Rhonda's son was getting married, and Rhonda's future daughter-in-law. Sorry, Rhonda, I'm botching up the story. Rhonda's <laughs> son is getting married, and Rhonda's Rhonda had a jacket made for her future daughter-in-law, and like a like a denim jacket that says "bride" on the back. Yeah, and then she meets this this young lady from Long Island named Daria, who's got Mirabella Designs, and Rhonda tells her about Last Mango and FFO and what we're doing. So she. Daria created a jean jacket that she hand painted that's got like uh, the Last Mango logo, the FFO logo, and we're raffling off um, $10 tickets. Yeah, you can get them on the Freedom Fighter Fighter Outdoors Outdoors website. That was the back. This is the front. It's got the FFO on the wrist. Compass Rose on it. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a beautiful raffle. It's a raffle. It's hand painted. um, $10 for a ticket? 10 bucks per ticket. How do you go wrong? I know, exactly. If it would fit me, I'd buy six of them. <laughs> Tickets. <laughs> well, I, I, it's a Steven, beautiful jacket. Maybe we can post the link, Stephen, to the FFO site. Yeah, definitely. Possible. I was just showing yeah. it to you. So. Oh, cool, yeah. But yeah, we can oh, throw it in the chat. The link. All right, that's cool. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, that, that's, a, that's kind of a neat. We've done a few pretty neat raffles through FFO, and they're always a lot of fun. It's, not, it's nice to see how the community the community gets behind it, right? Like. It's just, it's, it's nice. Yeah. I love it. It's a great jacket. Very talented. That's beautiful. Nice. She's a Long Island girl. Yeah, well. That's Where did she from. say she was from, Daria? I can't remember. But started it started with a B, no? Yeah. Bayshore? B. Baldwin? No. Bayshore? I'm a Baldwin boy. Bayshore? I think it was Bayshore. Ba- Babylon? I think it was Bayshore. Yeah, well, it wasn't too far from you. That's all I remember. Yeah. And she goes out to Montauk and the, like she makes jackets that say Montauk on it. I mean, she makes anything, but 
um, she started like she goes out to Montauk and I think that's where she developed the love for making those jackets mainly that say Montauk on them and now she does ever I mean she's all over the place now she's she's busier than ever she's doing great but she decided to team up with FFO and Las Mango and do this and she donated the jacket she donated her time she Beautiful. yeah really really nice, it, so is nice. it came together nicely Love it. That's a great. We need feel good stories. You're right. You're right, Stephen. We needed we needed some positivity and feel good. And I hope you I feel good, Stephen. I hope you feel good. And I hope there's no more rude comments about my haircuts. In this. <laughs> <laughs> they came from your friends. So <laughs> I, have it's young, man. Nice friends. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can ban him if you want. <laughs> Bert, that if anybody yeah. speaks the truth other than your son, it's Bird. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> no, that's good. I like that, that. That's fun stuff that comes through the chat, especially when it's not at my expense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all, right, Dave, but, all right, bad finger. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to have, we're going to have to have some special meats for the bad finger later. I know. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So um, what else you got, right. Steve-O? Well, so thank you, Rhonda, for, for mentioning the raffle. Uh, I got Suzanne Barnum uh, saying, Vinny and Sarah, you are amazing people. I'm sitting here in New York feeling so proud of what you're doing. So thank you, Aww. Suzanne, for, for throwing that in. Thank you. Um, you guys asked, I can't remember what the what you guys were asking about, how many, um, how many outreach. members or something. The outreach. Rhonda, Rhonda put seven in the chat. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Rhonda. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so... That's um, seven, I'm pretty sure. But she yeah. corrects. She <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, most most people are just commenting on the funny stories and stuff. We don't really have have many questions that are coming around. Uh, one question that we do that we did get that both you guys can probably dig into is uh, favorite fishing spot in New York and Florida. Oh boy, good question. Carl, you go first. Are you going to go first? What do you want to do? Uh. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, my favorite spot in Long Island. Wow, ah, yeah, see, I already am. I love Montauk. I do love Montauk, but I also love the New York bite for bass on a migration in the fall, especially around Sandy Hook, diamond jigging. I just love following the fish on the South Shore all the way from Montauk all the way to the Sandy Hook area. That's always fun. And, you know, I'm in St. Pete, but I, I honestly, the best fishing I had was with Vinny. Um, I had that 25 foot uh uh copy of a great grady white and I, I used to fish out of your inlet and a lot house point man um i think to this day that's the, one of the nicest fisheries i i uh enjoyed man because you know 90 to 120 feet sitting looking at sailfish and pelagics was amazing always so those if i had to pick right off my head is you know montauk south shore long island uh, i know it's like four four places i'm saying already but uh <laughs> You know, I like St. Pete too, but it's a more of a bottom fishery, um, and you're running, you're burning a lot of the fuel. It's great. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I just picked up a nice 42 foot uh, Jersey, uh, Jersey Devil. Actually, no, Jersey Dawn. Excuse me, an old Jersey Dawn, and it's a lot more comfortable running three, four hours to, out to the grounds. But I don't know, Vin. What do you think? I know you're probably you probably were going to say the islands, right? No, I said, so if it's, New York, if it's New York or Florida, and I got to stay between the two, I would say Montauk for sure. Yeah. Love fishing Montauk. Sure. Um, and I would probably say, if I had to pick all the places I fish in Florida, I would honestly probably say Key West. I tell people all the time, Key West is a fishbowl. Yeah. You know, it really is. I mean, there's you can do pretty much the bottom fishing is great. If you if you have a slow day, you can catch tarpon on your way in. Yeah. Um, fishing is usually really good. There's just, I feel like there's just, it's a it's an unbelievable fishery down there and then but though like if i had to say too like we're really lucky out of hillsborough inlet though i know you know that but like it's, it's a you, you only got to go a mile it's and crazy you, you could be in a phenomenal selfish fight quickly so back in the day i think when we first started talking you call, you used to pull a couple blue marlin out of that that shallow shallow water right like two two three hundred i remember you catching a couple blues out there right so that was a that was a weird i was actually fishing a ton though that's really why like you know you put that much time in but sure. yeah we we had we had hooked three in like a two or three year span 
you know, right, right there on the center of the floor. Today. I just remember Rocky, you and me and Rocky. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really thought you were kidding me, man. He's like, come on, we're going to go out and get the sea monster. And I'm looking like, <laughs> right? I'm like, yeah. sea monster. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's definitely telling me a fishtail. I see Rocky, he's got, I think, a 50. He got a 50 weight. Big Shimano, or was it an 80? I think it was a 50. It was either and, an 80 or 50 bent butt, right? Yeah, it was a bent butt. And he strapped <laughs> in a bent butt. And we're on a revenge. It's a, a center console. And we hook up, and he's on it. And I remember you yelling at me, grab him. And we both grab, and they're dragging the three of us across the boat. And it was the sea monster. You finally caught I, I, I never got a look at this thing. Because the thing was, that, that's when the Goliaths were coming Goli back. It was the Goliath. It was yeah, the sea monster. when they were coming back. And yeah. that thing was, yeah, it was just. Drug us around the boat, dude. Yeah. Right? How many times did you get, you came tight on those guys all the time though, yeah. that summer? But didn't you plane, I remember you saying, and uh, a lot of guys are doing this over here. As soon as you hook up, you put it in the corner and try to plane the boat off. Yeah, put the boat in gear, pull them out. <laughs> yeah, the sea monster. We did a couple of sea monster trips. That was fun. Yeah. Oh boy. All okay. right. So I think we I hit the question. question. Can yeah. I ask a question? Well, Carl, what's your favorite fish to catch? To Sailfish. Fish? If I have one, I, I, it, to me, it's, you know, um, uh, I just love to sailfish. I love everything about it. You know, uh, my best day was, and Vinny will, you know, I actually was by myself kite fishing out of Hillsborough on my 25 and I caught seven sails by myself that day on a kite. And, uh, to me, that was, I can die now, you know, sink, you know, to me, it was just, I just love selfish. I just love selfish. You know, if I had to pick, that would be the one. Um, what about you, Sarah? Oh, my favorite fish to catch. I mean, we, I, I really do have fun fishing in Montauk. And like, I mean, striped bass. Stripe, uh, stripe bass is fun. It's a fight, but I, you know what? I really have fun fishing. Do you know what I'm going to say? Fluke. 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 That's a blast. Like, she, like that's what she, she asked me to go do that all the yeah, time. Yeah. Like I could just sit out there for hours and yeah. hang out and it's quiet. It's peaceful. I think it's because she likes eating them too. And I like cooking. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. I think that's my favorite. Fish. Yeah. She just likes it. And plus, you know how it is there in Montauk, even though a lot of them end up being shorts, but it's not yeah. stop. Yeah, I also really do love freshwater fishing, like yeah. into a freshwater. Bass fishing. Yeah, yeah, like fishing. we've gone out with Jose, we've gone out with Captain Johnny Stabile, and we have like I have I have a really good time doing that because it's slow, it's quiet, it's. Excuse I know me. you guys love the early morning and get out there offshore, but I kind of like that change of pace too. Well, both things she's talking about are just nonstop action. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll catch two hundred bass. You know, in, 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 in down here in South South Florida, um, that's I shouldn't say we do that every time, but it's not uncommon to catch like 200 bass um, in in a day. Especially like I'm sure well, I, I want to get into the spots, but you know, it, there's some really good spots, and that that's what I think Sarah likes most is just the nonstop action. Yeah, and the kids. What know. about you, Vin? What about Vin? What do you like? Giant tuna fishing and sail fishing. You like giants, yeah. Yeah, my back and arms can't do giants anymore. I don't know how Mr. B does it. We don't take them out of the rod holder the last two, three years. Yeah, just crank on them. Crank on them. They've been, they, since 2018, they, they, they've been all giants for the most part. It's crazy. You know, like, and close, real close, right? Yeah, close, within 30 miles. Yeah, it's crazy. How, yeah. I know over in, uh, you know, Nassau County, they're sitting right off the beach, too. It's crazy. I'm like. Yeah, last, last summer, I mean, there was a bunch of caught right off the city, right? I mean, right off the, yeah. Like right, right, right at, in the back. That, that's Andy Hook, the New York bite right there. It's crazy. Yeah, I would have loved You know, we used to diamond jig, uh, you know, it was when I, before I left. My favorite, I diamond jig bass, and you'd see the bluefin coming across, and you'd throw everything in front of them, and they wouldn't eat, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Finally, they got it dialed in, like you said, to catch them in, in front of the city. It's it's nuts. It's yeah. crazy. That's, that fishery is doing pretty well over the last few years. I mean, it's really the fishery is doing well, and it's, it's it's been a lot of fun. I mean, the last the last couple summers, we've just we haven't even been trolling. We've just been live mackerel fishing. Huh. How do you beat that? That's yeah. a blast. Good for you. So talking about trolling and, and live baiting and everything. So now you have this really cool thirty three Freeman. Um, it's the interim right now because you're getting repowering the other Rybovich. Um, you're digging the thirty three you guys like to ride better at a 33 so i cut you off earlier d 
the transition to the 42. Yeah, so, um, so Jimmy has an idea about building a bigger one because he knew that they had a 40, they had a 37 and a 42 Freeman at the time. Now they actually have changed the 42 to a 43 and they have a 47, but at the time the 42 yeah. was the biggest one that it's they offered. Big one, yeah. And so we go back, we talk to Billy Freeman and Scott Cochran about buying just the hull deck liner and putting it on a trailer and bringing it down to Florida and having Roy Merritt over at Merritt Boat Works build a house for it and then have okay, a I, I'm sorry to interrupt. One more thing. Um, sorry, man. For the, for the non-sportsman people, or not, um, it's all about hull design. The Freemans, and, and what's amazing about it is it's an old school, counter, it's a catamaran boat. It's two double hulled, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, Vinny and I, and a lot of the sports fish guys always ran mono hulls and they're great, but Vinny gets on a catamaran, Jimmy gets on a catamaran and explain to me the difference because it's like a magic carpet basically. Right. Right. That's exactly. Right. That's what I was, that's how I describe it to people. It's like a magic carpet, right? Um, it's a planing hull catamaran. It's a stepped hull, um, totally different than like the displacement hull cats. Or, or you know, cats without a step. I mean, it's a, it's it's a high performance symmetrical catamaran hull. Meaning symmetrical, meaning both 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 hulls are the same. Sarah's probably gonna go put Joey to bed. That's all good. <laughs> yeah, Joey. You know, it's a symmetrical hull. There's a lot of there's a lot of magic in the design of those Freeman hulls. They they ride. Um, I mean, the Freeman hull literally rides like a magic carpet. Feels like you're sitting on a gas shop. Runner. And they, it's the, it's the best overall ride that, that I've ever been on. A lot of guys that have been on them can, can build it. And you've been on a lot of custom boats. You've built a lot of custom boats. You've serviced them. And so I remember you telling me when you had the 33, it was amazing. So, so for the people who don't know, you know, uh, and Billy's about this too, hull design. He loves down east boats. The way, uh, the way they ride is totally different than what, you know, Vinny's saying is a high performance. Vinny, you're making speeds on 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 that 42 that are you're you're hauling butt, right? Yeah, and, and efficient a, and efficient speeds too. Like I mean, like the fuel burns way down and the speeds way up because it's just a high efficiency, high performance hull that is. also rides really well. So it's it's kind of they they really it does everything well, which you know a lot of hulls do some things well and a lot of sure. things not well, right? So, um, but so we. So yeah, you touched on the hull design, but then we, so we, we have this hull, which is the platform we want to be on, which yes. is a great hull, great deck, great, great platform. But it's a set, and, they come as rigged as center consoles. They don't have the pilot house from the, no. from Billy Freeman's factory, correct? That's correct. Uh, center console, coffin box, and leading posts or double leaning posts are, are your options, right? Yeah. Um, and so we, we talked about building the pilot house we kick around all these ideas to make them comfortable with it, you know, with the idea, do a lot of drawings, a lot of naval architectural drawings, just to make sure that we don't mess up the CG, the center of gravity, all that, sure, stuff, sure. all that stuff. And Roy Merritt accepts the project. He's, he starts building the house. The house is made out of carbon fiber. Um, hull Which shows is, up there. Again, again, I, got, I just got to dumb, not, I, I have to dumb it down for myself sometimes too. You know, Roy Merritt is building these custom built mono hull sport fish boats. That's the quintessential custom sport mm -hmm. boat in the one in the world who Vinny knows very well, brought me through the factory. Jimmy knows them well. And they go to Merritt and Merritt's like, yeah, I'll do it for you. Not many people can do that. So Vinny's being very humble about it, but he goes in there and they're going to make a pilot house off another hull and put it on another hull, which is that was like mind blowing to everybody. Like what? I'm gonna, Merritt's gonna finish that boat? I remember you telling me like, wow, that's crazy. And that's because you and Jimmy came up with this great idea. I'm sorry. It's funny, Roy, Roy turned it down at first. Did yeah, he? At the, at the, he said no, maybe a couple <laughs> times and we just kept working on him. <laughs> he'll, tell you, he'll tell you we had him in a chicken wing pretty hard about it. <laughs> I could see yeah, so we he ends up, he ends up doing it, and and I in the end I think everybody involved had fun, and the the whole, the whole thing with the project is we involve so many different people who know a lot, right? So that's why you don't fail, you know, because it wasn't just it was a really good team effort. Um, you know, we went to pipe welders for the tower design. They I think they make one of the best towers, um, yep. and through even the pilot house design, Roy bounced it off of so many other people that he trusts. Um, there's a bunch of guys at Merritt's that are, are really good. Like there's a guy named Brian Lighty who does like all the CAD and design. 
he did all the he did he did the he did all the drawings. He put really good team, really really good team effort. We built that boat in just over six months, which is crazy. Actually, and when I say we, I mean I literally mean like the guys. You know, there's a lot of people involved in it that that had a lot more blood and sweat and tears in it than, than I did. I was just making sure all the pieces were coming together. Well, that's a pretty big responsibility. I remember you bringing a boat from uh, Carolinas to down here in Florida, the West Coast, East Coast, to Merritt and everything like this. And, uh, you know, um, the like I was saying, uh, unwrapping the Christmas present, what, what I really liked is you brought everybody, I call it the backstage pass. Stephen and I always have this talk. It's like, if you don't see the things being built or seeing the music being rehearsed, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like magic, you know, understand it. But when you bring people to that backstage thing, which you did with social media, I remember there was a you know, video of Monique, the uh, one Monique Rick, Richter doing uh, the full painting of the teak inside the pilot house. I remember, you know, them uh, you showing the Garmin stuff. Uh, you brought everybody along. And I think that also helped out with community. Uh, you know, people are, I know I'm gonna, it interests me. I know a lot of people, following that project very very uh, you know found, found a lot of interest so so how long have you had that boat now for was it 2019 you finished it or yeah we finished it in july of 19. july 19. so yeah, two and a half years almost there so i'm coming on three so well, well you guys be well and hang out for a while but uh, uh we're gonna say good night to everybody and uh thanks for your time and uh keep up the, the good fight with fo and uh uh, keep on running the boat and keep healthy and uh, last manual boat works and uh, the veterans uh, what can I say about those guys and girls thank you so much for all you do and um, Vinny and Sarah are a great magnet for uh, getting everybody together and keeping the community together uh, on the boat and off the boat so thank you so much for thank being you for here. having us thanks for having us